Hi, I'm Ashley from Sunny Maid, and today we are going to do a stack and whack quilt. Hello friends, welcome back. We are going to put a whole quilt together today. Today, So I am super excited that you're here. Um, it's a super simple quilt pattern. I'm gonna show you how to make one block, put all the blocks together, and then we're ready to go. This is a pre-cut friendly quilt, super easy, something we can all do, and there are no points and no funny seams. So let's get started. What do you need? First, you're going to need a layer cake. This one is called Little Red. It's by Migs and Me. I've had this for a while because this is the quilt I bought it for. And it's been a while and I haven't made it yet. So what you first need is you need a layer cake. You're going to need, um, I'm going to put a border on mine, but you probably don't have to. You're going to need background fabric. And then I got this super cute red print. And this is for the binding. I am going to do a blog post about this that I will link to in the description box. So it will tell you exactly what you need of each of these things and a simple write-up of how to put this quilt together. Um, what's cool about this pattern is we're going to cut these the exact same way. We're going to cut it into four pieces, then we'll just mix up the pieces and we're going to sew them back together with um, background fabric in between and it's going to come out as a super fun quilt so let's just take this over to the cutting mat and get started okay what supplies do we need at this point we need a ruler that's the size of our um, 10 inch layer cake you need a rotary cutter with a nice sharp blade and i'm going to start with four of these i feel comfortable cutting four at a time some people feel comfortable cutting less. Some people um, feel comfortable with more. But I like to do four. So that is what we're doing. Now my, um, this ruler that I'm using is a Missouri Star. It's made especially for layer cakes. And it's only five inches wide, which is nice. But I actually want to make a six inch cut. So what I'm first going to do is line it up my squares with a bottom line and a side line. I'm then going to go over six and we're going to make a six inch cut going this way. And then I'm going to turn my ruler and make a four inch cut. And this time I'm lining up my ruler here. I can line it up on the sides. And so I end up with four different pieces. Okay, let me do another set and then I'll mix and match them so that you can see what we're going to do. Let's find some different colors because that would be fun. Let's pull these ones out of the middle. Okay, once again, I'm going to line these up with the lines on my cutting mat. Crossed side bottom and side my first vertical cut is going to be x six inches and then my horizontal cut is going to be at four inches so here we have our four pieces now so what I want to do is to take the rest of my layer cake here and I'm going to cut them into the four pieces. Now that we have our 10 inch squares all cut into four pieces, we can decide how we want to sew them together. Now you don't have to trim them up or cut them up the way that I did. You can do diagonal lines, you can do 
um, more pieces, you can do less pieces. You can actually cut up your 10 inch squares any way that you would like to make the whack and stack quilt. But I'm just showing you how I did it at this time. So let me show you the quilt block that I made from them. I moved the pieces around to create this block. I put strips in between the pieces, both top and bottom. I switched them around so that they looked like this and it had an offset from the top and the bottom. Now you don't have to do strips. You can just show, sew the pieces together because that would be super fun. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make this block specifically and then how I put them in a quilt. And because I ended up with 42 squares at the end, 42 of these, these are 11 inches. Um, you start with 42 squares, you end up with 42 squares. Okay. So because I ended up with 42 of these, I was going to make a really big quilt. And I thought that was a good idea. But as I started to put my the first part of the quilt together and i thought you know what i think i'm going to end up making it in two quilts make two um throw size lap quilts instead of one really big quilt so make sure you stick around to the end and i will show you both of them and what they look like so first we're going to put this together then i'm going to show you how i combined four of these to create a bigger quilt block and then I will show you the quilts that I put together. Now that we have all of these cut the same way, I'm gonna show you how we set this up. First, we're gonna take these top two and we are going to switch them. That way, it's not a straight line from top to bottom, it has this offset. Second, if we do this right, we can switch these around so that we are starting with something different in all of them. And that's actually fun. And if you wanna do it this way, you can just take them over to your iron, your sewing, um, sewing machine and sew them this way. So what we're first gonna do is we're going to put a two inch by four inch between these two on the bottom. And then we're going to put a two inch by six inch on this one on the top. Once we get our pieces all sewn together, we are going to then put a two inch piece between the top and the bottom. So first, let's sew one piece together and one piece together. And I am always going to iron it towards our background fabric. So let's start with these two pieces, take them over to the sewing machine and get it sewn okay. up. We have these ones sewn together, these ones sewn together. We're just going to flip this over like this and this one and get those pieces sewn together as well and then iron them towards our background fabric. Okay, now we have our top and our bottom done. It is now time to sew them all together with our piece. So I'm going to do this one, iron it towards my um, background fabric. Then I'm going to sew this one on and iron that one towards my background fabric. So here is our finished piece. We have all the pieces together. We sewn them together. And this is going to be our basic block. We are now going to square this up. I don't know if you noticed that when I was cutting my layer cakes, they were slightly bigger than the 10 inch. And once I um, put them all together, we are going to trim this to 11 by 11. So what I'm first going to do is line up that long seam right along here with a line on my ruler. And so my first thing I want to do is square up this side. Okay. And obviously I don't always sew straight seams, so that is just how it is. Now that we have a nice straight seam here, I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to line things up with this bottom edge because that is my straight seam. So what I want to do is line up that edge 
bottom edge on a line on my ruler. I'm going to put it as far as I can over to the right, and all it's going to do is cut off any of those points that were left over. I'm going to flip this around, and this is where I'm going to get my 11 inch. So now I can line up my left seam, I can write, line up my bottom seam, and together, once I do this one and this one, we are going to have a 11 inch by 11 inch square. So I want you to take all the rest of your pieces that we've cut apart here, and we're going to take them over to the sewing machine and we are going to create this block. Now when I go to put the four pieces to get four quilt blocks together to make a bigger block, I actually changed up my sashing a little bit. So here is the four pieces put together. I did it so you have four the four big ones there in the middle and as you can see, I put a smaller um, sashing in between those pieces. So now I'm going to show you how to put this piece together. And um, what's nice about this quilt is that you can decide how big you want the sashing. So this bigger one, when I made just the quilt block, I used two inches. But because I wanted this, this sashing here to be smaller, I used one and a quarter inch sashing. You can use two inches on all of it. It will make your quilt bigger. If you want to make use the one and a quarter on all of it, it would be just great too. It will make your quilt a little smaller. So you can decide how you want to put it together. I'm also going to show you how to make sure that you line up so that it has this continuous line here, here, and it creates that, that secondary pattern of the squares in the middle. Now that we have our quilt block together, it is time to get it set up in the bigger block. So what I'm going to actually do is take four of these and I am putting the bigger block, the bigger square in the middle. Okay, I want to make sure that I'm looking at fabrics here and here, okay, how they're going to come together in the middle. You can do more than one of the same color. It will look just fine, but I like to make sure I have four different colors. I want to make sure that these aren't too similar as I'm setting it up. I'm then going to take my strips of fabric, and I have, these are um, one and a quarter inches by 11, because we just trimmed all our blocks down to 11 inches. I'm going to put one piece in between those um, and I'm just going to keep it really simple. I am going to iron everything towards the white just like I did with these blocks. I'm going to do it with this block and then after I get the top and bottom row put together I'm going to take another one that's one and a quarter inches wide as well and I'm going to put it here in the middle. Again pressing the seams towards that background fabric. Okay, now that I'm at this point, I'm going to show you how to make sure when we're sewing all of our pieces together that our lines get lined up so that you so that they'll be nice and straight. So I'm going to show you on this one. So what I'm going to do is in general I'm going to fold this over so that it is right on top of my other piece. Okay? Then I'm going to start at this end. I'm going to fold it back. And if you look, let me zoom you in. If I fold it back here, and this is lined up here on this end, these are not lined up. So what I'm actually going to do is shift it over, 
so those line up right on top of where they're supposed to be. Fold it back, and then I'm going to grab a pin and put it right in that seam so it stays in place. And because I know I'm going to be coming from this direction, sewing down this way, I'm going to just do it on the left seam. So here, again, we're going to fold it back. Okay, now that I've got this side lined up, the rest of these might actually be a lot easier. So small adjustment, fold it back, put that pin right in place, and then the last one. It's a little harder to fold it back now that I've got a couple pins in it, but I just want to make sure that those line up right there, fold it back, and stick a pin in it. Okay, now for my last seam. And here's our quilt block all put together. So we have some beautiful lines here and across the top on the bottom. Now because I did have to shift this when I was sewing, I do have some edges that don't quite line up. So all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna really worry about the size of my quilt block. I'm, that's just kind of the person I am. If you want to know how big these should be, they should be 22 inches square. And that's if you use the two inch sashing here and the one and a quarter sashing here. So what I'm actually gonna just do is take my long ruler, line up that seam line of the sashing with the line on my ruler, and I'm just gonna give it a quick trim to make sure that it's nice and straight on that side. And I find that I need to do it on the opposite side as well. And this side looks like I might be trimming off a little more than I planned. So this is interesting. If I line up, my line right here on this seam, it sticks out farther. Oh, can't see it. It sticks out farther down here, goes back here so that it's under trimmed, right? Then sticks out here and goes right to that corner. So I'm just going to do what best I can, do my straightest thing and trim it up as best as I can. Now let's look at our progression. So first we cut up our layer cake, then we made these, these with the two inch um, sashing here in the middle, and they are 11 inches by 11 inches. We then added more sashing, and we ended up with a bigger block, now this is one and a quarter inch sashing, and these are 22 inches square, okay? When we get done, because we had 42 of the smaller pieces, we have a couple options. So it kind of gives us an odd number. We can't make an even number of these. You would have two of them left over. So what I actually did is I made nine of these with the four, different squares and then I did the took the last six and I put them together in two pieces like this and for one of my quilts I took six of the larger squares put them in a quilt top I put took the last three of the larger squares and the three double sets like this and put them in another quilt top so we're at that time, it's big reveal time, so I'm gonna show you my two quilts that I made from just one layer cake. Okay, our first one, here's the first quilt. This is the one where I put together the six four block patches. Um, just put them together and then I put a, no border on it, nothing on it, and I quilted it with a swirly pattern dots on the back and the red binding. This ended up being 44 inches by 66 inches. Okay, so here's the first one. 
My second one, I put the four patches and then those two patches here. So they're all together. I then did a border of the background fabric and I ended up by putting a six inch border on each side. Funny enough, this is also 44 inches um, wide, but it ended up at 70 inches long. So here are my two quilts. Which one do you like better? The one that has the border on the side. I actually kind of liked just putting the border on the side instead of all the way around. Or do you like the one that is just the quilt blocks? Both of them have the dots in the background. I did loops on this one. And this one, I actually did a, just kind of a square geometric pattern um, for quilting. So that was kind of fun. I don't know. Can you see it? Maybe you can see it. And of course, the same red binding. Tell me which one's your favorite. I would love to know. I am putting both of these up on Etsy. So I will link to my Etsy shop down in the description. They're going to be $150 a piece. And I will ship them to you if you want to buy one. So thank you for following along. I want to see what you are working on or I want to see how you finished your own quilt. I'd like to see how it turned out. You can find me on Instagram at Ashley underscore Sunny Maid and I will see you next week. Happy sewing.